Praise God. Hallelujah. So good to be here again today. And God is faithful. Today is the last day of the week, Friday. The Lord wants to speak to us on something very important and significant for us in our walk with God here on earth. <clears throat> Remember, God has been revealing some truths to us from His Word, which He wants us to apply and to be daily beneficiaries. Amen. Father, we thank you for today. We are approaching week ahead and we give you praise. Today is Friday. We thank you for how you've been joining us through this week. Lord, we say, let your name be exalted in Jesus' name. Lord, give us a word to hold on to this period. Father, I pray that you breathe upon your word upon our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Jesus. Amen. So today, God wants to speak to us on being contempted. Being contempted. Being okay at the time. Being contempted is being okay at the time. Not really being satisfied or really being filled per se, but just being okay at the time or following the pace of movement with your satisfaction. Now, this has to do with a very popular scripture. But the Lord has cautioned us through his servants. <clears throat> and I'll read that place now. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 6. He said, But godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. When you are godly and then you are contented with what you have around you for that season or for that time. You are convenient with it is great gain is great gain this has to do with things like material things resources finances and the rest of them this has to do with positioning yourself not being too extravagant not being too out saying this is a do or die affair like lots of people have made mistakes and made errors in their pursuit for money they allow the love of money to capture their hearts. And many have sold out their soul to the devil because of money, because of resources. And many are into evil ritual practices and lots of wickedness because they were not content with the level they were before. Instead of them joining and following the pace which the Lord is trying to lift them through, they are trying to create their own way. And they think that there's any shortcut to break. There's no shortcut to greatness. You are either eating your future of tomorrow now, or you are living the now, preparing yourself for a greater future. So these are two things that are involved in this case. And this is why the Bible said that godliness and contentment is great gain. Don't begin to say or look at your neighbor and oh my dad is to tell us something very interesting. He said, if you look at your neighbor. You will not thank God for what God is doing for you. If you begin to look at your neighbor that is higher than you, living above you, you will not thank God for what God is doing in your life. But if you look at those that are below you, you will see every reason to thank God. So instead of looking at your neighbor that is living a high life or a very large life or is living a life that is higher than your standard, please look at your neighbor that is living below the standard. You have your roof over your head. You have not thanked God. We talked about gratitude some days back while we're entering into this new month of September. So people are not rendering gratitude to God. That is why they are going out with all their hearts, selling their souls to the devil for evil. Please, let's remember to give God praise for all the wonderful things he has done for us. You may say life has not been easy, life is not fair, or you begin to make statements like life is not balanced. That is not even scriptural. If you have God in you, look at what the Bible says. Godliness and contentment is great gain. I also want to read another scripture in the Bible, in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 11. Hebrews chapter 13. Okay, let me read Hebrews 13, verse 5. He said, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as he have. For he said, okay, for he, for he had said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. This was what God told his people. In the time of old, and this is an emphasis, he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Look at verse 6. In the same Hebrews chapter 13, he said, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Remember a few days back, we were talking about our help coming from the Lord. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. If you draw your strength from God, your riches from God, your wealth from God, your energy from God, your consistency from God, if you draw all this strength from God 
I tell you, man can do you no harm. Man can do you no harm. But if you want to do it, mean joining a quick rich system just because of pressure. Don't allow anybody to pressure you. Don't allow anybody to pressure you. There are seasons in a man's life. Tomorrow, you mean, you, tomorrow, you don't know about tomorrow. You can never tell how your tomorrow looks like. All these things are captured into the very will of God. If only we follow the principles of God, our tomorrow holds more better things than our today. So please, we must be consistent in following God and following His word. And that's why we're bringing you daily devotions like this to charge up your spirit, man. To make you connect with your maker. And now I want to pray because I'm letting my spirit to pray for as many that have gone far away from their maker. You have made evil decisions. You have you have been so intrigued by pressures of friends and relatives around you. And you have dipped your hand into evil. I want to pray for such people, for such persons that are coming across this video now. I decree restoration upon your life in the name of Jesus.